I want to show you how to create a tooltip you can see right here that uses HTML, CSS, a few things with CSS3, um, but it uses some, some data attributes from HTML5. And this will work in IE8 and later. And you can have a fallback for IE7 if you want to, but let's take a look and see how it works. So let me get over to Dreamweaver and you can use any editor if you want to. What I did was I set up a list here and then in the list I've got each one of these is a link. So you can see it over here in my code. Now this is an HTML5 doc I set up. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add data into each link and we're gonna pull that data into the tooltip that we generate using CSS. Now that sounds a lot more complicated than it actually is. This is pretty simple actually. So if you come into a link here, let's say, and we're gonna put in data. Now the thing about this data attribute is it can be just about any anything you want. It can be data hyphen something. You can name, you can call it Fred, it doesn't really matter. Um, but it's got to have like one character at the end here. So we're going to say data tooltip, and then I'll put like equals quote quote, and then we can type in what we want. Here is nav one stuff. Okay. Now for each one of these links that we're going to pull this data in from, you can go in and just put this in. So I'm going to right there, put a space and paste it, put a space and paste it. I'm putting it into each link. And you can have this, it doesn't have to be a, a link necessarily, it can be an LI, there's different things we can do here. But I'll say here's nav two, here's nav three, okay. Uh, there we go. So we've got the, the data, the information set up that we're gonna pull into the tooltip that we use. Now we need to create a couple styles to get this to work. So I'll go over to my CSS and you'll see I got a lot going on here. Well, not a lot, but we're gonna create another style. Now the other style that I'm gonna create here, and I'm gonna be pretty specific, I'm gonna say that when somebody, uh, we're gonna have a hover obviously in the CSS, but right now we need to set up the actual tooltip and then hide it. So we're gonna use the before pseudo class. Now, te technically it requires two semi, or two colons rather, you can see it right there. Let me hit some returns because can, I can move it up. So this is a, a saying that we're gonna put something before the anchor tag, okay, before the A rather. So we're gonna go in here and we're gonna define what this thing is and then what's in it. So first of all, I'll say what's in it. So we can use what's called content, whoop, content property. And we can say, all right, we're gonna pull in an attribute from the A tag essentially. And the attribute is called data tooltip. Sweet, whoops, you can type, okay. So we, we essentially just told it what to put in the tooltip and we're gonna put that before the anchor tag. So it's pretty much dynamically generating this thing. This is, you guys, this before pseudo class, which is really cool can be used for all kinds of things. You can stick like a an icon in front of PDFs or after PDFs, you have an after and a before. Um, tons of things we can do with this. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna basically just position this thing. So I'm gonna say, all right, let's, let's get it out there. I'm gonna uh, put a position and you know what? Actually, let's do this, let's just color it. Let's, let's do some different things. So I'm gonna say, let's put a background color here of, uh, I don't know, whatever, a lighter gray. And then um, I'll change the color of the text. We'll do some different things here. And just to show you guys, and you know what? I'm gonna go with the dark, there we go. And then we're gonna do some padding and different things. And, and I'm gonna get this out there on the page and I'll say uh, three picks, 10 picks, something like that. Now, if you take a look over here, you're not gonna see much happening. If you're in, let's say Dreamweaver, I'm gonna take this out to a browser and see what we've got going on so far. So I'll save my stuff. And you'll see that it's actually starting to work here. It's got this thing showing up and it's starting to, you know, starting starting it out, okay? So let me go back over. So it's saying tooltip, and you guys can see that it was blank because I screwed up and somebody, why don't you speak up out there? Uh, data tooltip, I misspelled it. If you do not have the correct data, the name for the attribute, it's not gonna work, it's gonna be blank. Let me try that now. And you should see, oh, there it is, it's now pulling it in. And you can see where it's putting it. It's putting it inside the LI, but pretty much before the A there, okay? You can see it's actually kind of wrapped. Now what we need to do is we need to position it and put it where we want it. So I'll come in here and you can do what you want with this. I'll put a position of absolute and you can type. And I'll say from the left, we'll put it at, you know, whatever you want. 20 picks from the bottom. Oops, I'll put it at uh, minus, I don't know, 40 picks or something like that. So we'll try that. Let me go take a look at it now. 
And you can see, all right, we're 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 starting. It's, you know, kind of getting there. Positioning-wise, it's starting to get there. Not too bad. Now what we need to do is you can see that it's actually starting to wrap the text, which is kind of annoying. We can put a width on it, but what if the text is different sizes? Well, you can decide what to do here, but I'll do something like this. I'll say white space, no wrap. How about that? Okay. Take a look at it. All right, cool. Now they're overlapping each other. Nice. Let me get rid of all these. Okay. We're doing we're doing pretty good here. We've got them out there now. We got the tooltips out there. Uh, the problem is ultimately though that they are showing, okay? <laughs> now, we can go in and do a lot of different things, but we need to hide them. So what we're going to do is we're going to put an opacity of 0 on this. Now, that's going to work for a lot of browsers, but it's not going to work for IE8 and earlier. For IE8 and earlier, which we need IE8. You got to have IE8 in there. We're going to put a filter. We're going to use filter alpha and put opacity equals zero. There we go. Awesome. Now let me go take a look at it. I'm going to go out to the browser and see what we got. Cool. They are now hidden. Now what we need to do is we need to make sure that they will show up when you hover. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to create another style here. And I'm going to borrow this one right here. So I'll copy this and paste it down here. And what we're going to say is we're going to say, okay, if we hover over the A, I want you to do something to the before content. So we're going to put a colon hover in front of the colon colon before. And what I want you to do is I want you to change the opacity to 1. Awesome. Now we need to also account for IE8 and earlier. So I will put a filter, whoops, put a filter in here. I always do that. And say opacity 100. There we go. Well, let's check that out. Bam, bam, bam. Cool. Now we got our little tool tips. Nice. Now the next thing we need to do is let's add a little bit of flavor to this. We can go into the A before and we can add things like rounded corners, gradients, blah, all the CSS three, three things that we, we kind of love. But what I want to do is I'm going to put some uh, transitions out here. So we're going to put, let's say, like a WebKit transition. Transition, if you're not familiar with them, allows you to change the transition, if you will. So we can say, let's change the opacity and have it be a certain time. So we're going to take 0.6 seconds and we're going to either, we can do what's called easing. So you can ease in or ease out and I'm going to ease out here. So it'll be a little slower on the way out. Now since we need to have this for different browsers, this is technically CSS3, but we need to have several of these for different browsers. We're going to have the uh, the main one, the one that uh, W3C is, is putting forward called Transition. We need to have one for WebKit, one for Mozilla, and one for Opera, not a zero, it's an O. There we go. Now we've got our different transitions. So it's telling it, when you have this thing, we are gonna transition the opacity when we hover over it next, okay? So I'll take a look at that and see what we get. Bam, 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 nice. You can change the position, you can change the styling, you can do just about anything you want with this, but I just wanted to show you just some cool things we can do with this data attribute. This is just the tip of the iceberg. There's tons of stuff you can do.